Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Jim Howard. I'm the chair of the Family Care Council uh, Area 1, um, one of the last remaining members of, in Panhandle. Uh, and this is, would be, so this is our meeting port. Uh, we're going to take care of just a little bit of a, a housekeeping duties. Um, Family Care Council, in general, I've been with them for the last uh, six, eight years. Um, and attendance has certainly dwindled. Um, we are under legislature for um, kind of to be the voice, the family voice for APD. Um, and for a lot of different reasons, uh, things have dwindled since then. Uh, the governor has, has stopped appointing members to the Family Care Council. Um, so to be a, one of the last appointed members for Area 1, <laughs> I guess it's a great, uh, a, a great honor, but it took a while. Um, the focus on Family Care Council for the next, for this coming year is going to be spotlighting on resources, connecting our families to resources, um, not only in the Panhandle, but also throughout the state. Um, so today I was hoping that, there she is. Shannon, are you back on yet? Uh, one of our spotlight on resources, of course, for today, we have two uh, great agencies that are connecting with us, Autism Pensacola and uh, Stephanie with We the People. So we're going to be talking about those two. Um, and once again, we are recording and uh, any of the links will be going from there. Uh, so looks like we're there. Shannon, um, are you on? Shannon. So we're going to give Shannon just a few more minutes to uh, work out. There's always some sort of bugs that happen with computers and things like that. Um, Stephanie, are you on? I'm on. Okay. Tell you what. Um, I'm on and I can fill in until Shannon's ready to to blast here just a little segment on the importance of family care councils oh go ahead um, now you, you know what, what part of the state are you from i'm part i'm from collier county so naples florida southwest florida great seven hours south of you all um and family care council our family care council is is number eight um and just like <laughs> The other family care councils around the state, we've struggled with appointments. I will say that um, this is a big part of what I've been talking to my local legislators about, because I believe that family care councils are where we connect with one another and where we get information about community resources. It's so important to keep our family care councils alive. And I would highly encourage everybody on this call, please reach out to your local legislators and let them know what family care council means to you. Um, trying to get an understanding of why we need more app appointments. A lot of, actually all of the people on our family care council have been with family care council since almost the inception mm. and it serves their time. They're tired and uh, it needs to kind of turnover to younger families, uh, to more families. We just don't have appointments and it's hard to be a council without board members. Uh, so I, I did get a lot of good feedback from the appointments office. So if you have an application you haven't sent in, um, go ahead and do that. Cause I believe appointments sh should be coming soon. Um, cool. That would be great. I, yeah. I hope so. Well, um, once again, we, uh, you've you've helped create an organization called We the People. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that one? Sure. Um, we the People is not an organization. Oh. <laughs> we are as grassroots as grassroots gets. We're families um, across the state of Florida, advocating for positive legislative change with our legislators. Uh, session started last week, but we started our group in August. It started with 10 families in my local area, um, and it's spread 
to uh, close to 1100 between the different platforms right now. Um, wow. We had, there was 88 delegation meetings and that's like um, a meeting where you get to go in public forum in front of all your representatives and your local area Senator and just about any subject whatsoever. Um, but the, the, we, the people group was at virtually every legislative delegation meeting. And in a couple of them, we were the main stage. There was enough families there that that was the focus. Um, and I think having families just go speak their truth. Our, our mission's real simple. It's to get families to go meet with their local legislators and, uh, by sharing your own personal story, I cannot possibly know the in-depth uh circumstances that you all have walked through and the challenges that you face but you do and legislators surely don't know and um i started this based on my own experience i i have twins with autism and one of my twins had an accident at his school um where he almost died and we reached out to the agency uh, for help and it took over a year to get that help. And that's my story. And that's the story that I have been speaking to legislators and in, in particular, my local people have sat down with me multiple times, talked about it. And now we have a bill addressing those issues like in the House and the Senate. I'm really excited. It's, it's House Bill 1047. Um, but other families... We've had families that were denied access to even be on the wait list um, because of improper documentation, you know, and they've met with their legislators and explained their situation and now are approved for services. Um, there's something called constituent services where when they're not in session, it's a great time to, to develop those relationships. And so that's what we do with We the People. We... Um, we did something really simple uh, because we families have a gazillion things to do and we got to be very intentional on what we put our time into. So we we created on um, on Jim's screen, he made us this website, which is amazing because I just don't have time, like unbelievable guy up here. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you click that link right there on the By My Side Today uh, page, It'll take you to a form where you click it just so I can show how easy it is. Sure. Tell your story. I was really, amazed. I was amazed how simple this it is, was. It's really great for people who A, can't make it to Tallahassee or B, whatever the struggle is to get your story out. This simplifies it. So it starts out with what's your name? First name only, non-identifying. You know, my name's Josh. How old are you, Josh? Or, or uh, what county do you live in? This is important. So uh, I live in Pasco County. Um, how old are you? I'm 28 years old. What are three things about you, Josh, that, you know, might be a, a, a place of interest that you and your legislator could, could connect on? Um, three fun facts. And this just is like an icebreaker for families. And then... Um, I, I know when I've been asked to tell, you know, the story about Ben, it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> where do I even start? I put all of these things in, right? Um, so I, I was really impressed by how simple this was. Um, and know, put a picture. The, the idea here is to show legislators we're not a line item on a budget. We're not an expense. We are human beings and, and we need your help. And this pictures always help connect. So upload some favorite photos of yourself and then what suggestions do you have for your legislators on how they can help you? And there is a character limit on this. Um, <laughs> idea is what is a one page uh, thing that, that a legislator is going to actually reel and internalize and take on this story, you know? So Ben's is up there on, on the website. You want to show Ben's? Sure. Let's we get back to it. There it is. Yeah. So, and yeah. So then I go in and, uh, my actual like degree is in marketing and design. So I make this little like one page flyer that has Ben's name, his picture, some things about him, who he is, how old he is. Is he on the wait list? Is he on the waiver? Is he not on either? Um, and where he lives. And then the message that you sent with a little tagline. 
And what we've been doing is sending these to legislators. Like there's certain bills that are coming forward um, where some of the stories like really pertain, but we also have been sending to, to every legislator, even if they're not in the, the committees, but they all, you know, they're, it's all going to come to a vote eventually. And you want them to know us. And the idea right. is to build these relationships. And what's been really, really neat is uh, we're becoming resources. I had um, even the community reach out to me about like that, um, you know, the registry bill that just got passed uh, that, that, where you could you can opt into the special needs registry anyways, okay. because because we've been making these relationships, people acknowledge me as somebody who knows stuff about policy, uh, which is cool. But I, I really know my story and you really know yours. And that's what I love about the Weeza people is it's not one person running the show. I, I could, like I said, I'm a single mom of four boys. Uh, we are all doing this and it's working because we're all doing this. Um, and that's, that's we, the people, we have a weekly zoom meeting on Fridays. Um, we alternate it between 2 and 6 p.m. just because everybody's got different schedules. So this Friday, this Which, Friday is at 6 p.m. Right. This Friday that, is at 6 p.m. and then we'll alternate. Um, now that's, so 6, we, that's 6 p.m. Eastern time. So it's Eastern it's 5 p.m. for people in the panhandle. Right. That's right. Uh, yes. So 6 p.m. Eastern time, it's one hour and we're really just gearing everyone up for DD Day. So Autism Awareness Day in the Capitol is February 6th and right so, next door to it is February 7th, which is Developmental Disability Day in the Capitol. We the people have worked really hard. We secured a table, uh, which yay. is really <laughs> got to have some of our information and we're going to put out together you know we can't all just be like hovering around the halls of the rotunda so we'll put out a you know kind of a mission agenda for our families and we're looking to like maybe the night after dd day if you guys are still in tallahassee like let's all go to applebee's let's go to dinner let's go be a family let's go do something um where we just get to celebrate us now, part of the, the tell your story, um, what are you up to now on, on stories from families? Holy moly, I need IT help. So it's really cool. So we've got about 200 stories now. Um, and this is over three months time, which is impressive because we started with Ted. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have like 50 in the waiting wings that I have to um, have process. To gotcha. So I see Amanda Hayes on this call and I'm volunteering her to help with that. Oh. Uh, we, we do want to have these all geared up and ready to go to present to our legislators on DD Day. Um, but also as bills go forward, it's great to have more stories, more people showing the need, um, whatever it is. It's highly personal. And that's what I like about this. We don't have a platform. Our platform is our stories. Um, and what I've done pre, pre, yeah, go back to that. Oops, sorry. Uh, how to meet with your legislators pre we the people um i started doing this with people in my own area and i came up with seven steps from start to finish on a successful meeting with your legislators because like everyone else i was like i don't want to go sit here and talk with some politician and nothing get done this sounds crazy um, but there really is a process to making it successful and i ran this past um Senate Pasadomo, Senator Pasadomo, uh, a few months back, and she said, this is liquid gold. Uh, the only thing that she wanted to add it is under number one, where it says expert advice that comes from Senator Pasadomo. The first thing we got to do is make the appointment. Um, senators, representatives, they're just people I learned from meeting with them. You don't have to be fancy. We're not lobbyists. We're not professionals. We're parents. Um, so got to make the appointment, uh, and, and her advice to me is if that appointment is with the aid, take it. Our aides are our gatekeepers. They are the quick access to know if we're going to talk about your issue or not. 
So those legislative aides, people dismiss them as like, oh, it's not it's not as important, but really they're the brain trust of it all. Um, and then this just goes through all, all the seven ways, all the way through follow up. And everyone that has met with the legislators from never, never meeting, um, follow these steps and they come out and say, Steph, I feel like a superhero. I felt, you know, hopeless and in despair, but, but now I've, I've put that energy into something positive and it's unbelievable. It's how I felt. Uh, it's how families across the state are feeling. And it's also, been really great for legislators to see that we're not a bunch of like rah, rah, crazy parents. Mm -hmm. we're, we're just like everyone else. We love our kids and um, we want to be resources and connect with you. And these are steps to success for everyone. Cool. Um, and this photo is available on my website and I'm sure if people email you, they can uh, get a bet, better copy of it. I was trying to blow it up and it wasn't doing very well. Um, yeah, but that... our website. So, so I have a local um, kind of like Autism Pensacola. I can't wait to talk. I can't wait to hear from this girl. Um, so, Autism Collier is a local resource guide for our area, and we're we're gonna have all this stuff on our our site. Gotcha. Um, we're or there you go, Shannon. <laughs> yes, I'm here. <laughs> Yay, she's here. Sorry about yeah. all that. I was trying to, I have recently got a new computer and this is my first time trying to do like a Zoom with it. And so just having to work out a few kinks uh, here at the house. I, I understand. What can we do to help? Um, I believe we're already, uh, are you ready to go with it? We try sure. to share. Yes. Um, I know I'm on my, talking about <laughs> Um, go ahead and see if you can do a share share your screen, and and I'll stop sharing mine. Can everybody see my screen? Because I, I believe I'm sharing. Okay, very good. Get this box out of the way, and we'll be good. Okay, you're on. Yay! <laughs> okay, um, I'm Shannon, and I'm with Autism Pensacola. Um. Not only am you know I an employee of Autism Pensacola, but I'm also a mother to Trey, who is 14 and on the autism spectrum. Uh, so most of my experience um, in this field comes from my personal experience as a parent, <laughs> which is some of the best. Yeah, for parents. Um, yes, exactly. Um, so I don't, I'm not sure how much time we have, but I just kind of want to go over who we are and uh, what services we offer for individuals and families affected by autism in our local community. Can, can, um, let me interject with that for just a second to give you a little bit of history. Um, Ben is 22. My son, Ben, is 22. Uh, when he was first diagnosed, uh, there were very little resources for, uh, you know, children with autism. Autism Pensacola was born 20 plus years ago, uh, and they've been really a kind of a lighthouse for people in the panhandle. Um, they do different events for to get your children out in the community. And Ben loves, uh, you know, photos with Santa. Um, uh, the, the trick or treat and the Halloween type uh, trunk or treat, um, and then late the last hit was f bowling with Santa. We're I'm not quite sure if Santa bowled, but Ben Ben didn't really care anyway. Um, but they've been a real real cornerstone for resources for families with autism in in the Panhandle. So we're really really happy that you're here, and I'm gonna give you the spotlight back. Thank you. Um, so uh, originally when we first started, um, our main focus was uh, Escambia and Santa Rosa counties, but we have expanded to cover Baldwin County, Alabama, um, and from Escambia to Walton counties, we're starting to offer more services a little further out, um, just because there's such a need in the community, even, you know, well, and Walton County is not that far away. Um, our, our most uh, important purpose is to act as a resource center um, for those 
looking for autism services. And uh, what we do to provide that is we keep an up-to-date uh, resource guide. We're constantly looking for um, new services in the community. So when families either move here or first get that autism diagnosis, where who would they want to call first um, to help find those services that may best benefit their family? Um, as far as uh, our programs and services, uh, our um, main program would be Kids for Camp. It's a five week uh, long summer learning lab. And I'll tell you more about that in just a minute. Uh, we also have a safety program, Project Lifesaver. Uh, we offer families in need holiday assistance. Uh, we partner with uh, local um, police departments for the Take Me Home program. We offer support chats, a monthly respite program, adult cooking classes, um, other various social opportunities, and a community event called Sensory Street. All cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so Kids for Camp, uh, we do serve uh, children and young adults between the ages of 2 to 25. Um, it's over a 20-day period of the summer, but depending on the dates, it can span over five to six weeks. Uh, this is a um, data-driven program uh, and is based on best practices in ABA. Um, all of our staff members, we pull from the local school districts uh, who have experience working with children with autism, and they receive extensive training from the Sacred Heart Autism Center. Uh, during the summer camp, we do work on a lot of skill acquisition. However, we're doing basically what a summer camp would be for neurotypical children and young adults. Uh, so while, you know, while we have goals and um, we're, we're recording data on those goals, we're still doing fun things like going to the pool, um, going on uh, field trips to, to do golf um, or bowling um, and other community outings. So it's still that, that fun, fun summer camp feeling and a lot of times our kids don't even realize they're working on um you know uh social and independent living skills yeah one of the biggest keys there is is getting them out get starting young and getting out uh, in the community and doing different things and that kids for camp also really works as a great training um platform for teachers or you know people in the field um uh, working with our kids so it's really it's been a great success it has been and uh this year will be our um 18th year of kids for camp so wow. pretty exciting we've been around for quite some time uh we were nationally recognized um back in 2009 i believe uh mm -hmm. so um you know a lot of great things happen at the summer camp and uh, not only you know are we providing that those summer services uh, to families it also helps um, the children attending uh, to keep from regressing which a lot of our kids do over the summer without services uh, that they typically get during the school year. So, so mm -hmm. my son, um, he has attended, this will be his uh, eighth year. Um, and there's so much value in it. Just even me as a parent, uh, giving him the opportunities that he otherwise would not have due to a lack of services here locally. Right. And so our uh, next program will be Project Lifesaver. Um, this is a safety program for um, any person, regardless of age, with a developmental disability uh, who has a tendency of eloping or just wandering off. Uh, Project Lifesaver is a um, radio transmit transmitter device uh, that is worn um, typically with like a hospital bracelet 24 hours a day seven days a week uh, if your child was to go wondering or missing uh, we partner with the Escambia County Search and Rescue uh, who would help locate them if in the case you know they were to go to go missing uh, it, we also offer yearly trainings uh, to first responders in our area um, to you know help them recognize uh, what a person with autism um, you know their their um, 
oh my goodness, I'm going blank, but just how to recognize them in, a, in an emergency situation and uh, teach them uh, techniques to help them um, provide, um, you know, sensory, um, whatever, whatever their sensory needs are. Correct. Um, in, in talking to a first, a few of the first responders, a lot of times when our kids are young, they're, um, and they do a lot, a lot of times they're seeking out water. Sometimes we have drownings. Uh, so, you know, that's being able to track that and, uh, is a huge, huge benefit. Well, and one of the good things about the, um, the the radio transmitter mm -hmm. is that um it can be detected underwater as to you know with gps uh once it goes underwater you lose signal and um you know just with uh the history of those with autism um trying to locate water when they go missing mm -hmm. uh, this was the best um device that that we decided you know would work for families now we do 100 percent fundraise for this program um and so there's no cost to families uh, all they have to do is agree to come in uh, once per month uh, to have the battery serviced uh, to ensure that it's working properly now is that, um, is that open to, to, to families in in what counties um, so right now, that would be open to Escambia and Santa Rosa County. Okay. Um, I believe uh, the local sheriff department in Okaloosa and Walton, they offer the Project Lifesaver program. Uh, so uh, for those families living in those counties, they can contact uh, the sheriff's department. Okay, great. Um, one uh, really exciting community event that we offer during the summer um, is called Sensory Street. Uh, it is an opportunity for the community to come in and experience um, the world of autism. Um, in addition to that, we do offer closed days to um, the public uh, for just families with any any child or adult with with any disability whether it's autism or not to come in and practice much needed skills um for example we'll have um like a dentist chair and setting for x-rays um to kind of have a, a opportunity for them to practice what that might be like what they may experience when going into the dentist uh, we also have a mock emergency room set up with that with the actual bed from the emergency room a doctor walk them through the steps of um uh, triage uh you know just so they can have that opportunity to um be exposed to that. Um, another thing that we like to do at Sensory Street is offer um, an interactive banking experience where they um, attendees can come in and practice making a deposit at a bank. Uh, they can practice paying an, a, a utility bill. Um, we have a mock haircut station uh, where they can sit down um, and get a mock haircut. And we also have a um, a mock store where they can go on and purchase items on their own um, with right. sensory street cash. So it's, again, it's a great opportunity um, to have uh, a time to practice skills for individuals with special needs, but then mm -hmm. the community can come in and experience. These are some of the challenges that a person uh, with a disability may, may have and help them understand why it's important that we offer these services. Wonderful. So it's, it's, once again, it's community education and, and family involvement. Yes. Wonderful. Um, our holiday assistance, uh, we offer uh, $100 gift cards to individuals with an autism diagnosis. Um, we've had families that have multiple children uh, with autism apply and each child would qualify for the $100 gift card. Uh, this is a program that we um, fundraised for um, with several different community partners. And uh, for many years in a row now, we've never um, had turned a family away. Um, so, and, and what it is is the gift cards um, either come from Walmart, Target, or Amazon, uh, and families can select which one uh, would best suit 
uh, the the wants and needs of the child. Gotcha. Um, we we do open that uh, the first of October every year, uh, and that application period will run until um, mid November. And that can be found on your website. It can, yes. Great. Um, we do offer uh, caregiver support chats, and we have a Grandparents of Autism Pensacola group. We call them GAP for short. Mm -hmm. um, for our caregiver support chats, we like to alternate between in-person in our office um, and um, evening virtual, uh, just, just to see, you know, cater to anybody's particular schedule. Um, now, some of our services like the caregiver chats and Sensory Street and the Holiday Gift Card Program, uh, there's, there's no cost for um, anybody and membership is not required. Um, now, we do have um, the Second Saturday Respite Program. This is a once a month opportunity for Autism Pensacola members to um, participate in respite. Uh, and our memberships do start at $25 or more annually, or we offer um, monthly uh, sustaining memberships of $10 or more, uh, which would give you access to a service such as the respite program. Um, our staff for respite, again, they are um, very experienced uh, individuals who we um, typically have employed for summer camp. So they're, um, you know, they have experience and um, they have a passion for um, what they do at respite. And, and that's held, still held at Market Point. That's it the is, church. yes. Gotcha. Yeah, you all do a wonderful job with that. Um, and believe it or not, sometimes it, it's a, a huge miracle for just a parent to be able to get out and for you know three or four hours just to do something and breathe. Um, it's a huge, huge benefit. It is. It really is. Um, we'll have families that, you know, they, they use that time to do a, a big grocery store run because mm -hmm. having a child with a special needs, sometimes it can be hard to get to the grocery store oh, or, yeah, can, or they may I, utilize it for a nap or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. We don't care. We just want, you know, you to drop off your child with us so you have an opportunity to have a break. Correct. Even if it's just go home and back in the floor. I, exactly. We had, we had one parent <laughs> tell us that. Well, I'm just going to vacuum my floor. Okay. So, anyway. Yes. Um, and then our social opportunities and special events. I know um, at the beginning, uh, Jim mentioned uh, the holiday theme ones. Um, we do offer a monthly cooking class called Meals on My Own. This is for adults 18 and older. Uh, they go to the Pensacola Cook's Kitchen in downtown Pensacola, uh, and they each have their own actual station where they're preparing meals alongside um, chef and uh, their assistants. Um, we also do social Saturdays, which are monthly game nights. Um, with the game nights, we like to alternate in between a community outing and just an, a quiet night at the office. Um, this month, we're, we're meeting at our office from 6 to 8 p.m. It's always the third Saturday uh, where we'll do board games, video games, and have um, pizza, drinks, something of that nature uh and the next month we're going to cordova lanes for bowling um so it, and you know surprisingly enough we do have different um attendees for each different type of game night um we do have uh attendees who prefer uh, a more quiet setting and so they like to come to the office ones and then we have uh you know ones that really enjoy the community outings um so but this way we kind of have um you know both groups covered um a new thing that i started last year uh is fun with friends um this i started mainly because my son i would I needed something social for him to participate in. And uh, again, you know, there was a, a need in the community 
for other families as well. And so we meet at our office once a month on a Saturday morning um, for basically like a game day um, where we do video games, board games, card games. Um, but it's an opportunity, um, you know, for families to drop off their child for an hour and a half, run to Target, go to Starbucks next door um, while their child gets uh, to socialize with, with other kids between the ages of nine to 14. Uh, we do a spring and fall family picnic. Um, we'll typically offer one in Escambia County and then one in Santa Rosa County. Uh, and then our uh, special needs trunk or treat and sensory Santa. Uh, the Take Me Home program, we partner with the Pen Pensacola Police Department. Uh, it's a searchable da database with uh, physical characteristics. Um, you can get your child registered by uh, calling the Pensacola Police Department. One of our board members, uh, he was a retired uh, lieutenant with the Pensacola Police Department. His name is uh, Jimmy Donahoe. Uh, he actually created this program. Um, so uh, we, we are very invested with this program with the police department. Uh, and recently the um, Escambia County Sheriff's Department, they um, began offering um, uh, vehicle decals uh, with occupant with autism to help first responders um, recognize that there may be a person in the vehicle um, in an emergency situation. And then lastly, um, we have provided first responder calming toolkits uh, for sensory overloads. Uh, these have been um, distributed to every emergency vehicle in Escambia County um, to have on hand. Uh, the kits include sensory items, um, specialized uh, glasses, um, communication boards, uh, just uh, to have on hand for those that, that may need them. I Yeah, Escambia County came on board with that first. Santa Rosa was, was really hesitant to, uh, to finally come on board. They finally came on board. Santa Rosa finally came on board with that, I believe, a year ago. Um, and then, of course, Okaloosa and Walton counties, I believe, have some sort of with that. So... That, well, that's a just, great program. We just dropped off, gosh, I think 60 bags to Okaloosa County um, last week. So uh, they should be outfitting their crew, their police cruisers with those. Yeah. Yeah. They're finally coming on board. And this was what Stephanie was talking about, um, the bill that was passed or, or fixing to be passed with the Florida legislators to boost these type of programs uh, statewide. Yes, there is a bill. There's there's two bills. Uh, shoot, 861, I think it's come into me anyways, um, about officers being trained. Um, and that uh, statewide, that's huge. That is a great bill for families to reach out to your local decision makers, your representatives or your senator, and uh, saying that you would like uh, officers to be trained. Um, safety again, what, uh, what Shannon was sharing about drowning. We just had two in the last two months here where I live. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was on a call with autism society of Florida. She said that there was 90, mm -hmm. 94 deaths this past year. Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, our, our, our kids seek out water to, to help calm their nerves is what water. they do. Uh, um, but having, but this is not just for autism, the training for officers, you know, it's other related disabilities, cerebral palsy, N knowing how an individual needs to be uh, transported, all, all, all 911 related calls, we need our officers trained and the registry law that was passed makes a ton of sense if our officers are trained. Um, oh, yeah. So this, this year, this session, that's what uh, we're voting on. Wonderful. So it's nice to see how that, that plugs in. Right. Um, it's great that that's happening because there's such a need. Um, and then lastly, just our community partners. Um, we try and collaborate with as many other organizations in the community as possible. Um, although we are a small nonprofit with just two full-time employees and one part-time, um, we 
try and make the most of all of our time by offering as much as we possibly can. Um, and, so, you know, yeah. we, we go ahead, Jim. And you also have lots of volunteers that help too. Um, lots of volunteers. It, yes. Like if you have a family that is struggling to, to help send the kid to camp, then they, they, don't they provide volunteer hours to help with that? So um, for camp, we do offer uh, financial aid based on a uh, family need. Um, and then we do offer volunteer hours um, to help reduce the cost as well. Gotcha. Such a great organization. Um, uh, Y'all have come so far. We have. We really have. And so that's, that's kind of all I have um, to share today. Um, but um, it's, so, thank you so much. So Shannon, Stephanie is with Autism Collier. And how, how can the two of you connect with that? Connect later. Please your notes. With me. <laughs> you're the, you know, you say small nonprofit, but you're the grown up of, of what we would like to do here. Um, I love listening to everything that you guys offer. I think Pensacolians don't understand how blessed they are to have you because we don't have you across the state. Um, I, I'd love to talk to you at some point. Yes, yes, of course. Okay, wonderful. Um, so we have just a few minutes uh, for questions or trying to find the chat box. Uh, thank you both for, uh, for being here with us today. I'm looking for the chat box. Is there anybody out there that has questions or, you know, anything that we've covered? I have a quick question. Hi, um, Amanda. Hi, Shannon. Or will this be, or the recording of this um, be sent out or the, um, your yes. PowerPoint that you just went through, Shannon? Because I would eventually like to have a an autism putnam <laughs> so um yeah. you, like stephanie said you uh you doing everything that all the other counties across the state need so kudos to you yeah i'll be recording it and then i'll be sending uh the youtube link out to everybody who registered and you can share it with whoever you'd like great thank you if, if you have an opportunity, you know, just when you have a, a few minutes, uh, just go to autismpensacola.org. You can find all of this information on there. Um, and it's a really user-friendly site, um, a lot of information to go through, as well as like a copy of our um, resource listings. Now, are all of your families going to Autism Awareness Day in the Capitol? Has that been promoted from you guys? At all. Um, well, that's not really um, something that we would typically promote. Um, just we, we're we more non-legislative, shall I say. Um, like with our bylaws, um, that's something that we can't really have an opinion on. Just how they're set up. <laughs> but we, we are working. Yeah. Um, because this is, this is autism awareness day. This is not, um, political, I think is the word we're trying not to say. Uh, but this is, is really just, there's a lot of really good laws happening this session and we, we want to celebrate who we are that right. there's, no, there's no politic in it. It's just come to the Capitol and show, show who you are. I got gotcha. you. You have to, uh, I, I've been monitoring, I, I've worked as a support coordinator under the waiver program. I've been monitoring uh, events statewide. And you, please, you, please understand that we have to let our voice uh, be, be heard in Tallahassee because they, they, <laughs> we need to be heard. Uh, and one of the, the, the tell your story thing is probably one of the most powerful, easiest things that, that our families in the Panhandle could do. Um, I believe Stephanie, aren't you going to be delivering the whole book to legislators, yeah. or is it just separate? Yeah, if we want that in as soon as possible because we have to print those all off. Um, but we want as many stories, and we'll just keep rolling them even after we make a book. We'll make ten books if need be. Um, but the idea is, uh, families are the ones sharing the stories. Families are the ones being the lobbyists. 
organizations are just sharing that there's this opportunity for families to speak in Tallahassee. Um, that's not organizations' jobs to to advocate unless that's in your bylaws. Um, but if not, just getting that information to families so that they know where to go. Yeah, if there's um, like a flyer or something or a <laughs> website that we can share, I'm happy to. Okay, cool. Um, the just, our, just our like social media reach, we've got um, about 10K. So um, something like that, I think we could share. Autism Day is February 6th and then Developmental Disability Day is February 7th. Um, we the people, we are we are all all developmental disabilities. So we're promoting February 7th. Um, the Autism Society of Florida is hosting the event for um, Autism Day on February 6th. And I will send you both of those uh, information sheets and especially the story link. Um, the, the idea is, you know, a lot of our families have shared my, my child is on the waiver and it's fabulous. Thank you so much. You know, there's mm -hmm. lots of encouraging uh, support for, for the, the I budget waiver. And then there's families, you know, that have maybe been waiting on a wait list for 18 years and they <laughs> need our legislators to know that as well. Um, but not, not political, not pushy, pushy, just, Hey, this is who we are. We're, we, we have autism and it's our day in the capital. Yeah. Very well. Okay. Uh, Thanks everybody for being here. He's uh, on the call. Like is, uh, everybody else is just a name. Is uh, any families have questions? The question. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're the chat box is um we're actually reached out to NAS Pensacola to some of the school liaisons for there. Your team, thanks for the meeting. Uh, Family First Network, thank you for the information. Um, so like I said, we, we do record these, and once I process it. We'll be sending the, the link out to our YouTube. Um, you know, it's, it's going to take one voice uh, and families come together. Uh, we need more families in the panhandle. We need more families and support throughout statewide. Um, and the best thing that we can do uh, is to let, let them know we're here <laughs> um, and to go from there. Especially here, here as in Family Care Council. Oh, yeah. If you are on this call, whether you're a provider or a family member or just a passerby, these the family care councils are so important to families. And we kind of need allies to come alongside of us and say, families, this is where we educate. This is where we connect. Absolutely. So reach out to us if we can help you connect. Um, we have, like I said, resource contacts throughout the state. Um, we need more families in the panhandle. Please let us hear from you. Please uh, go through the the website and uh, share your story because um, it will it it will make a difference. So, anything else? Last chance. <laughs> Once again, I'm going to thank everybody for joining us. Um, we're going to process this video and then we'll get links out later this evening. So, thank you all so much for for coming and um, um look forward to our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Yeah. I'll Get take in. care. I want your number. Jim, will you connect us later? I will. Yes. Very good. Thank you so much. I can't wait to speak with you, staff. All right. Bye, guys. All right. Bye. Bye. -bye.